And now in more practical terms, there is uh, a schedule to this retreat, which is suggested. And just so you know, um, this is a very flexible schedule. This is an open schedule. There is no need for creating tension or expectations in your mind about what this retreat should be or has to be or certain things that you think that you might have to do or not. I am giving very general instructions right now so that everybody has something to start with and that we can all start together on the same ground and then build from there. And the Buddha's teaching is very vast and very wonderful and it cannot be explained in just one way. There are so many ways of understanding it. And if you look at the schedule you will see that today is a very flexible day. There is no, no big uh, fixed schedule today. It is quite open. There is this orientation and then meditation instructions after, after this. And then there will be guided meditation at 3 this afternoon. But this is... Uh, the reason for this is that you have enough time to settle into your own little monastery that you've made at your own place, your own little meditation center. And you start feeling at ease and that you start slowing down. Because uh, going into retreat when there's too many restrictions and too many things happening all at once in the same day. It's a bit overwhelming for a lot of people. And so, of course, you are more than encouraged to practice and to can begin your, your meditation. And everybody will have their own schedule. Everybody will have their schedule of meditation because some people will meditate for example half an hour some people will meditate an hour some people will meditate two hours and this schedule is really designed so that you can do this and you don't there will be no bells on this retreat <laughs> and you are in a way this is an advantage and a disadvantage for for some people, uh, different uh, people uh, like different ways of doing. So we cannot we cannot do everything perfectly for everybody all the time. So some people really like the bells because they like having this reminder saying, "Oh, now you have to do go to the Dhamma Hall and meditate." Obviously, online retreats are a little different. We cannot do this. We don't have this kind of environment. But also they provide much flexibility and that is the, their strength. And so we can try to emphasize the strength of it. And you are encouraged at the beginning to alternate between uh, sitting meditation and walking meditation. And walking meditation is very important. It will really help you, uh, for one thing, to ease into the meditation, to get some exercise, which is very important. We still live in human bodies, and these bodies need to be somewhat activated somehow. Sitting for very long periods of time, some people are not very used to this. And so at the beginning, as well as for when we will start meditating longer. 
exercising, which means walking meditation, is always very, very, very important. And especially for, for pain also. Sometimes people have bodily pains and just walking a little bit will really help relieve that pain. And as we go into the retreat more and more and as the mental steadiness starts to settle down and starts to stick, then we will sit for longer periods of time and at your own convenience there is no there is no strict uh, fashion of doing this but this is where slowly things will go because the mind needs time to settle and I strongly recommend to at least walk for an hour and a half every day. Of course, we're living in interesting times right now, which uh, it is a pandemic. And so however you can do this uh, will be helpful to you in the long run, at the beginning and at the end. And however uh, this uh, works for you. And usually we will start, uh, starting from tomorrow, we will begin, as you notice, there is no waking up time. There is, um, uh, this is left really up to you. Of course, waking up with the sun, waking up early is good. Morning meditation is good. And that will really help you um, being aware and uh, break through some hindrances that uh, happen because of uh, lazy start, for example, or not, not putting forth energy in the morning. But this is really left up to you uh, because having in mind that this will be an international kind of retreat. So here in Canada, we're not in the tropics. So <laughs> we have, uh, in the winter, we have about seven hours of daylight. So it's, it's one thing to wake up at uh, five in the morning, 4.30, four in the morning, when the sun rises at four in the morning and it's warm out and it's all of these things. But uh, when you live somewhere that uh, daylight is very short, the energy is very different also. And to, in fact, try to push against that can be very uh, detrimental to a person's health. So you're welcome to really be mindful about what you need in this retreat and what what feels good to you because as we will see it's very hard to generate any kind of loving kindness for anything or anyone if we don't feel good ourselves in fact that's quite impossible <laughs> and so it's a bit counterproductive to try and really push forward and Uh, force things to happen in a particular way if you don't feel comfortable. And at the beginning of a retreat, we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from whatever we're doing, maybe working, maybe doing this or that, being busy. And now we're slowing down. And we're having this wonderful opportunity of touching base with ourselves, touching base with what feels good. And I really want to emphasize this on this retreat, what feels good for you, because you will notice that your meditation will be so much faster and so much better when you actually care for your own well-being and that you take care of yourself and do things that you feel are good for you. 
Now we will usually begin with uh, an open meditation at 6 and then at 7.30 there will be a puja which is meant to uh, have a short a small dip in the Dhamma in the morning to uplift the mind and if there is a request there might be taking the refuges and the pre the virtues and though I want to emphasize that um, you at any point you should not feel like you have to take uh, the refuge in the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha that is only when people feel drawn to it and there is more about it in the in the retreat booklet but um, what is very essential though is to remember the virtues and remember uh, every morning or constantly to that this practice is not only about sitting meditation, it's also how we behave in life. And these virtues will protect us and they will really uh, bring us forward on this path. And this is uh, not to hurt any living beings, not to take anything that is not given, not to have any sexual misconduct, uh, on this retreat this might be fairly easy for everybody and um, not to say anything that is hurtful or any lying any false speech and this is another good aspect of this retreat there is we are all well, I guess, depending on your situation, I shouldn't say that, but uh, depending on your situation, there might be some interaction with people. So that is a very, very good uh, reminder for us to um, be mindful about what we say. And no mind-altering substances, which will really um, give ground for a lot of confusion to arise and uh, not seeing things as they are clearly. And of course these are the five virtues and the eight would be not to eat uh, at improper times which would be not eating in the afternoon. And that um, is left really up to any everybody's um, good judgment. Of course, of course, eating in the afternoon will impede the meditation, uh, especially eating big meals um, at the end of the day, just before, you know, uh, when it's late, then. Uh, <laughs> Evening meditation is not that great and awareness goes down and then the morning meditation either is not that great. So really uh, keeping eating in the morning um, is a very wonderful practice, is a very healthy practice also. Now not wearing any Adornments, adorning the body with uh, jewelry or rings or necklaces and things like that. You know, this is this is all to help us. Uh, you know, ha not having distractions for the mind to you know to f to to have to be as you are <laughs> without so many things on you. And so for, for a lot of people, it seems, um, it seems quite unimportant. And for a lot of people, it, it, it is not so, so important. But it, is, it can be helpful for some. And it's not to make a big deal out of if you still want to wear 
uh, necklaces and, and jewelry and things like that. It's not really a problem. And uh, there might be some questions about the eighth uh, virtue, which is um, high and luxurious beds and seats. That, well, if you want to take the eight virtues, really the, um, the one that matters the most is the eating in, in the afternoon. Um, and the luxurious beds and seats is simply once again to to help us um, keep things simple because that is that is also a big part of the Buddha's teaching is to keep things simple and in the West well and in, nowadays, not just in the West, um, it's hard not to find a high luxurious bed. <laughs> so <laughs> it's hard not to sleep on one. So um, it's not to make a big deal out of. If if you just sleep in your regular bed, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Technically, it's um, it would be just not not having anything like a big a big mattress or something like that but or an elevated mattress but once again this is very uh and here for example in canada it's um you know it's a cold country we're not in india so sleeping on the ground is <laughs> it's another it's another ball game so we um the, these these are not to create more hindrances for you they're in fact to help you so if if these create hindrances well just just don't attach too much importance to especially the last two and simply simply just be happy about being on retreat and having these guidelines to help you and as much as we can and the dhamma the buddha's teaching is very much like that and especially monks, monks and nuns really follow everything, you know, this is a whole lifestyle. But we have so many rules, but not everybody wants to live that and not everybody can. And it's not limited only to that. In fact, it's, it can be practiced by everybody. And how it, this is wisely practiced is by aligning as much as we can with what is being said, with what the Buddha taught. Not to fuss about all these things that, oh, I should do this or I should do that. Yes, perhaps there might be things that would be good to do, but perhaps there are things that are not possible for you to do right now, and that's just fine. Gradually, we will implement these things and test it out for yourself and see what works for you, see what doesn't, and wisely implement these things and harmonize with the teaching. And that's what it means to really wisely practice. And then there will be interviews after this puja that is meant to be... Um, a recollection of the Dhamma and an uplifting small talk for the mind because the Buddha the Buddha's meditation is about uh, uplifting the mind into collectedness through letting go then there will be open meditation and interviews and when I say open meditation that means you choose whether you want to uh, do practice sitting meditation or walking meditation whether you want to do half an hour sitting half an hour walking an hour sitting half an hour or an hour walking that is really up to you and start maybe with a minimum of half an hour sitting see how that goes and there are so many things that I can say in a beginning orientation. We will all discuss this personally in the interviews. 
And so every day there are possibilities for interviews and um, Kuna's uh, taking care of all of this and I think you've all received the, the links how to uh, book your interviews if you're interested. And of course much, much of this retreat turn, revolves around uh, these meetings that we will have because everybody is very different and everybody has their own things happening. And so I cannot say, it's impossible for me to say one thing that will be good for everybody. I can say things that will be good for everybody, hopefully, but uh, that will solve everybody's problem at once. That's impossible. So a very big part of this retreat will happen around um, whether or not you, we, we talk and we see what's going on for you and what what aspect of the Buddha's teaching you might find interesting for your practice and might be very helpful to you. And so these interviews are 20 minutes, but uh, there might be, uh, if we need longer or something, there might be possibilities for, for that in the afternoon. We will see how that goes. And afterwards, there will be uh, time for, f for, oh, I forgot breakfast. <laughs> After the puja is breakfast, then it is open meditation and interviews. <clears throat> and then that will begin at 9 here. And then at 11, it is uh, lunch until, well, noon, and noon is basically up to you. Uh, it is a, a time period. <clears throat> uh, some people prefer to rest. <clears throat> some people prefer to walk. Uh, whatever it is you want to do, uh, we, keep, we simply keep practicing. On this retreat, there is no real, there is no real break from the practice. There is no real break from the meditation. That's why we come into retreat. And uh, there is no whatever you you are developing, whatever wholesome state you are developing at that time, whether it's the loving kindness, whether it's any one of the Brahma Viharas, whether it's the Satipatthanas, whether it's the resting places of awareness whether it's forgiveness, which is part of loving-kindness and compassion. The practice is always the same. It is always to cultivate that. And so, whether we're taking rest, or whether we're walking, or whether we're sitting in meditation, and even on interviews, even in the Dhamma talks, it's always really the same. We always... The mind is the same all the time. We think that we stop and we go meditate, but when we stand up, what happens with the mind? It's the same. We do the same. <clears throat> and so, afterwards, there will be more interviews from one to two, and then at three, for the first three days, only for the first three days at three, there will be guided meditation. And like the Buddha often taught for the, at the beginning, uh, he often began with metta, loving kindness, or what I call boundless love. And that is how we will start, and these guided meditation will explain this a little more. And then from the fourth day on, there, there will not be this, because... Um, well, it's a quite busy schedule for a teacher. So, <laughs> um, with the interviews and then the Dhamma talk starting at 7, I believe. And then from, from 7, uh, we will gather again on, on these video calls. And every day will be uh, a talk on the Dhamma and 
these talks are always a bit different depending on what people are experiencing during their uh, meditation during the day. So there is no real fixed uh, Dhamma talk schedule. Uh, it will simply uh, happen as it will and the only thing that remains the same is that there will be a discourse of the Buddha from the original text discussed in, in these suttas and that is a very wonderful opportunity to hear what the Buddha uh, actually said and which is in fact uh, very overlooked apparently uh, in, this, in the teaching the direct teachings uh, that are in the discourses, what the Buddha actually said himself. And after this, well, there will be open uh, meditation again, up until however you feel comfortable. And then recharging and resting. So I hope this is fairly clear for the schedule and what this retreat is about.